and he lent me 200 bucks to go to the supermarket and get groceries, which is embarrassing. We got to well over a million bucks and then well over a, another million dollars. That was probably maybe five million, three to five mil when we launched. Them. And so we had this format called Vomit, Polish, Sexify, Mutate was like the framework back then. Your value as a content creator is to be the person in front of the camera. It's reps, dude, it's just get started. Yeah, your first video is gonna be shit and that's great. This is the Content Capitalist Podcast. We talk to business owners who've used video to grow their businesses to a million dollars a year or more. How they did it, what worked, what didn't. Welcome to the Content Capitalists with your host, Ken Okazaki. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Content Capitalist Podcast. Now, this is where we have conversations with businesses or business owners, more accurately, who are doing at least a million dollars and some of them a lot more. So today I've got someone very special with me. We met back in 2018 and before that, one of my clients in my video agency had actually said, you got to get in touch with this guy. Yeah. And I ended up meeting him in Los Angeles where he was running a, a small private event. That was a lot of fun. Right now, we've worked together. We've done a lot of things together. We've met many times. And yep. uh, I'm talking to him all the way from, I believe you're in Australia or is it New Zealand right now, Taki? No, I'm in Australia in Noosa. If you think about a map of Australia, we're sort of on the top right. -ish. Got it, got it. So uh, he works with coaches and a lot of people call him the million dollar coach because he has a really simple recipe for how to take a one-on-one -on -one coaching situation and make that almost infinitely scalable. And yeah. uh, I think that's where people come to him the most, his ability to help people take their coaching businesses and scale it up to much higher levels. Taki, thanks so much for being on the show. Dude, I'm stoked. I'm, I love the name, Content Capitalist. I think it's super great. I'm excited about the conversation. I've no idea what we're going to talk about or exactly how it's going to go, but it's going to be fun. And hopefully it's going to be really useful. Absolutely. Well, I, I think that there's a lot of people in... Uh, in the coaching space who mm. know about you specifically because uh, you have this no you have this approach to content creation where I've never seen a piece of content where I felt like you're desperate or pushy or trying to get people on this hyped up type of adrenaline to yeah. make an impulse sale and that is something that a lot of people kind of fall into this trap of and w would you agree with that about about the, your style of content creation yeah I think so uh, I've got like a couple of guiding philosophies or kind of thoughts about how content fits in our world that I think have been really useful for us. And the first is that uh, we give in public and we ask in private. And so whether it's video or it's a post in a group or it's a, an email, it wants to be super generous. There's almost never uh, an offer that's public. Uh, we give in public and then people kind of raise their kind of pinky finger and say, I sort of might be a little bit interested in that. And then uh, any kind of sales conversation or are we a fit conversation happens behind the scenes, which means our reputation is squeaky clean. The content's always really good, hopefully delivered with a bit of, you know, bit of uh, sass and vibe. And um, yeah, it means everything's super generous. So I think that's kind of one of the big, one of the big ideas for sure. I remember years ago, I was at a conference, uh, the Entreport Users Conference and Eben Pagan spoke. It's one of the first online marketers that I kind of vibed with. And uh, he was talking about uh, his, I don't know if it was his first business, but the first business I, I know of that he started was called Double Your Dating. It was like a dating advice. Um, yeah, I, I remember that for sure. Uh, yeah, and he had this. This is before character. I was married, so yeah, I was actually looking at that stuff. Oh, there you go, perfect. Well, maybe it worked. Uh, you, Natasha's <laughs> definitely a good catch. Um, and he said, I made a decision early on that I would create the dating industry's most valuable email newsletter. I was like, well, that's a good decision. I'm gonna do that for coaches. And so most of my, before video, I was a written guy, uh, which created a bunch of, you know, good value, but also a lot of hard work and stress because I'm, I'm a good writer, but I don't enjoy it. Um, but yeah, I think that idea of like, can we make the, the industry's most valuable, you know, video show like you're doing here or email newsletter or, or vlog or whatever your style is, I think that's just a good decision to make. Absolutely, I agree. Now. I think that a lot of people who've heard of you and, and what you're doing, they might look yeah. at you as, you know, having achieved a certain level of success and they might feel like, especially if they're just getting started, that um, it's it's too late 
for them, they might never catch up. And there's just this this gap between where they are and where they see you are. And I, I know some yeah. people don't have that issue, but no. I'd like to take a journey I, back. I, I need to look at that right now. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> they, they do, they do. And maybe we can help them by just taking a journey yeah, back to, to your humble beginnings. And yeah. I remember once, uh, I can't remember if it was you or your wife, Kiri Marie, who said that you actually had to borrow money for groceries from a friend. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah tell me about myself. that. Yeah, it's not, it's not, my, not my best time. Uh, so I'm going to tell you two quick stories. They both happen within a week. So the first one sets up the second one, right? So the first one was uh, I'm running this um, kind of marketing agency, I suppose you call it, with my friend Mike, who works, still works with this to, to this day. And there was enough clients, enough work to keep us both busy, but not enough money for really either of us and certainly not both of us we both had like four or five kids and so I come home one day and uh I was actually I was chatting with my friend Sam and um yeah man we were broke as a joke uh I was working a couple of different jobs to just sort of make it work this is on and top needed... of running your agency right yeah yeah the agency wasn't doing spectacularly well you could probably tell um so talking to my friend Sam who was much better off than me financially and much better with his money. And I told him that I just didn't have, like, a, I didn't know how I was going to pay rent. And he lent me 200 bucks to go to the supermarket and get groceries, which was embarrassing, but I'm really grateful because thankfully I only had to do that once. Um, so I got the groceries. And then a couple of days later, I come home from work and uh, Kiri Marie, my wife's there, and she says, Hey, babe, I've got some news. And my brain just goes, Oh, I like news. She goes, y You might want to sit down. And my brain went, Oh, I don't like sit down news. Sit down news is never like good news. And uh, she says, um, "Hun, I'm pregnant." And so we had this moment, and I'm, you know, we hugged, and I'm like, "Oh, that's the best," and da da da. And and, and then she walked out of the room. And I was like, "Oh fuck," because like we were already dying financially, and now we've got one more mouth to feed. And and that put me on this clock, which was like, if we can get to eight grand a month by the time this baby's born, I think we'll be okay. And if I can't, I think we're we're fucked. And, um, and what was the gap then between, you know, where you were at at eight grand? Oh, uh, about six grand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So you wanted to pretty much <laughs> like, right? something like that. I knew that if you we want to get, quadruple I, your I don't income, the exact right. number, but in that, like we were okay. a long way away and eight grand felt like the impossible number. And, uh, and that's Aussie dollars, right? That was Aussie dollars. That's right. Um, yeah, now business mostly tracks US dollars, but at the time it was all Aussie bucks. Yeah, it was really freaking stressful. And I'm working these three jobs uh, and some agency work to um, kind of to, like really trying to start this business, but at the same time, starting a business with five kids or four kids and one on the way, it was hard. And so I was doing it to a couple of other things to, to um, fill in the gaps. And, uh, and sorry, if, I just don't want to forget this, but just to give the, the listeners or the viewers some perspective, how long ago was this? How many years? Uh, so Aroha's 13 now, so it's probably 14 years. Wow. I don't know what year that is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Whatever, you know, do the math, whatever that is, 14 years ago. Um, yeah, and so it's been good for a long time since then, and it's getting better and better and better and better. But at the time, it was terrifying. And uh, I was like, shit, I've got to figure out how to make this money or else we're going to be screwed. So I've sworn like four times already on the show. I apologize. Um, <sighs> A friend of mine, Grant, connected me with a guy who had an audience of business of marketing consultants uh, that he used to get on a conference call every Tuesday with and kind of yell at them to follow the system and do the work. And, you know, and he didn't enjoy it and they didn't enjoy it. And so he asked me to, um, to run a session. It was like my first ever, it wasn't a webinar, it was a tele-seminar. And uh, it, was, it was funny because I'd never done one before. He's like, let's just do an interview. I'm like, okay, well, he goes, can you send me some questions? Okay, so I was trying to figure out like, what questions can I get this guy to ask me that would show that I could really help? And so I just figured out, I think it was my seven best client results ever, and then reverse engineered a question that would let me kind of tell that story as if I was just coming up with the story, uh, blah, blah, blah. So that's kind of what we did. And at the end, I was too scared to make an offer because I was terrified of sales and asking for money. And uh, so at the end, he goes like, Taki, that was fantastic. After everyone got off, Taki, that was fantastic, but you forgot to sell something. It's like, oh. I was a bit nervous. He was like, can you write an email that I'll send? So I wrote this email basically saying, um, you know, Taki shared everything except for the fact that his wife is heavily pregnant. Doctors say baby could come, um, you know, anytime now. And so on, on Friday, he's closing his doors to new business. 
and just going to work with existing clients. So you've got till Friday, here's kind of how it works. Send him an email um, to this email address if you want in with your phone number on, on it. So like 40, I don't know, 46 or seven or eight or nine people emailed me and I was shocked. I didn't know how to get, you know, take money on the internet. So the next day I'm ringing the 46 people. It's like, hey Ken, uh, it's Taki here. I got an email saying that you wanted to join the thing. Is that right? And they're like, yep. I'm like, oh, I mean, of course, of course you do. Uh, so here's how it works, do you remember? And they're like, yep. So let me get you entered into the system. And then I just like grab a pen and paper and I'd write their name and their phone number and their address down. And then that night I was up like Googling like how to process money on the internet and away we went. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's amazing. So yeah. would you say that that was your like maybe the first like, you know, big step from where you were to getting on the track to where you are now? Like it, yeah. it just kind of, oh, what are they, what's that expression? The scales fell off the eyes or something? That was a biblical expression, I think. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I was in complete shock. I mean, it was $200 a month. So I think we were at $1,600 a month extra after, after that webinar. I was like, okay, well, this is a thing now. And now I can rustle, I've got a thing and I can rustle up some more dudes. So that's kind of how it all started. Um, which was funny because I learned the model. The, the model was 200 bucks, like $197 a month. And I'd send people, this is old school, man. It was a 12 page paper newsletter, uh, a weekly fax. Uh, you were sending out CDs too, right? Audio yeah, CDs? Yeah, and, and the newsletter had a CD from the conference call the month before. And so there was like a monthly call. And the calls were, I was really proud of them at the time, but- What was terrible. it, Skype? Never, or like actual uh, telephones? It was, it was um, allconferencecalls.com, I think the software was called. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible because I didn't know the settings. And so partway through it, you'd hear boom, Ken has joined. And then a little bit later, <laughs> Bobby has left. I'm like, shut up and stop leaving my call. Anyway, it's really embarrassing. The hard part content wise was writing the newsletter because it's 12 pages. Like if it's an email newsletter, it can be as long as you want, but 12 pages, you have to have like a certain word count to lay it out right and da 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 da. And it used to stress me so much, man. Um, to the point where uh, like the newsletter was almost always late. Um, because I, I just found it so, I'm not a natural writer, I'm a people person. I like to talk, I like people. And this was like a business model, kind of modeled from Dan Kennedy, who was like an introvert who would stay at home and write newsletters to people. Uh, he was my you know, only role model of this kind of business at the time. And so I did what he did, which was like write to people. And I'm, I'm not a natural writer, it was really hard. And so I had to sort of trick slash force myself and work out some hacks to create the stuff, which is kind of interesting. So. Every Thursday morning at 6 a.m., I'd call this guy, Steve. And uh, Steve had to write some content for his business as well. And he would just say, hey, Taki, so what are you writing? And I'd give him a list of like topics that I needed to write for the upcoming newsletter. And then he'd say, great, I'll call you in an hour or 50 minutes, or whatever it was, I think it was an hour. And then we'd set a timer and then I would just um, outline articles. So I wouldn't write them, I would outline like seven Wait, So he was writing for you or he was just like- No, he was writing for him and I was writing for me. Oh, you're writing each other's stuff. No, 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 sorry. Oh, yeah. He was writing his own stuff. Okay. So he'd say, Taco, these are the five things I want to write. And I'd be like, these are the seven things. I was like seven every hour was the yeah. thing. Here's the seven articles I wanted to write. And then what I would do is I just set like a five minute timer and just draw, um, you know, whatever the topic was, let's say it was sales. And I had like some different writing formats and I just write the, like an hour. So the phone call was like just about accountability. Then. Is that right? The phone, yeah, it was like, what are you going to write? I'm going to write this. He'd hang up and then in an hour he'd call me and say, what'd you do? Got it, got it. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's a right. really good hack, by the way. And I do that with my virtual assistant hack. now. I, I, yeah. I'm just like, don't, you, you, you will not get off the Zoom call until I finish writing or doing whatever <laughs> task. And I mean, now I feel bad for I mean, her yeah. because she's got to hang out and just watch me look, you know, like just dumb because I'm not looking at her, right? I'm looking at other stuff. Uh, yeah. And I, I actually, it actually works. <laughs> It totally works. Yeah, 100%. So it was like the babysitter matter. And so we had this format called Vomit, Polish, Sexify, Mutate was like the framework back then. And Vomit was like these little mind maps of the topics. Yeah. Uh, and just like map it out. And uh, so I think we, I'd kind of alternate weeks. First week I'd outline them like this. The next week I'd just voice record them. And then they would go to this woman called Lainey who would transcribe them. Lainey from Magiscript. Thanks for getting me started. And uh, she'd transcribe them and, and write them out. And then they would get edited and then laid out into the newsletter. And that was kind of the format. But it was hard. Like, I'm not a natural writer. I'm definitely a talker. Um, and I was always, I found it really stressful. Good. So we went from running your agency, running two jobs. Uh, mm. Wife just got, gets pregnant. You did your webinar. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you did your live uh, 
uh, presentation. You got yep. some emails in, and now were, was there a stage between that and where you are now, which you know, which is uh, sure. coaching uh, people on how to set up their coaching systems, right? Uh, yeah. Was there somewhere in between, or did you jump str- build that straight up from there? I mean, it's kind of if you could see a direct line between what we do now and that. Um, obviously, the business model has changed. Uh, the caliber of client has changed a lot. In, in the early days, it was like mostly geared around people who needed to get two clients by Thursday or they'd be broke because that was my situation and I was really good at like rabbits out of hats. Um, and then I had some clients who did really, really well with it and others who were like doing really well and saw my model. Like there was no one-on-one coaching and, and they were like, this looks like a good model. Can you teach me that? And so we ran like a workshop and I taught them what I knew about it at the, st- at the stage and, and then that became a, a higher level service. And uh, yeah, it's kind of just evolved. It's basically the same business as it was 10 years ago, but you know, better, sharper, better client results, better clients, bigger team, da 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 da. Yeah, that's, that's actually one thing I'm really impressed about because I see, and, and myself included, uh, so many people who are at around- Opportunity hoppers. B- below or at a million dollars-ish, you yeah. just keep adding more and more things thinking that more activity is gonna generate better results and on the opposite side of the spectrum, I see someone like you who's got one model, one business uh, you know, thing, right? And even when you add new yeah. things, they're direct verticals above or below it, and it always just funnels into the, the same thing, right? Stop you know, like shining objects, that's, that's something that uh, I think everybody could learn a le- good lesson from just seeing what you've done, uh, and you know, just going out on social media, yeah. it, it shows. W- was there a situation or a time where you were doing too many different things and you realized yeah, and the, this, and the madness must stop. Tell me about that breaking point. Yeah, I think the natural tendency is to see the other thing or the next thing as better than the current thing and want to like chop and change all the time. And the downside of that is you never build momentum. And so I think a lot of people look for variety um, outside their current business. and I. I'm just like fascinated by the variety in my current business. I just think there's so many things like I'm never going to run out of stuff to do, to, to tinker, to tweak, to make better. I'm not really looking for outside. We got to well over a million bucks before we launched another thing. And then well over a, another million dollars before we looked at, it was probably like maybe five million, three to five mil when we launched the second thing. And I think um, if you've got more than one business and you're under a million dollars a year, part of the reason you're under a million dollars a year is because you've got more than one business. And I just think it's easier to be one thing to one person and get really freaking good at it. 100% agree, 100%. Now, um, when you, uh, right right now, if I, if I Google your name uh, or yep. look you up on Facebook, there's a ton of content, whether yes. it's gonna be the free lessons you're giving away inside your group, there's modules yep. there, there's uh, you know short form content that you shoot on your phone every now and then. Yep. Yep. At some point, uh, when you first started doing video, did you, was, was there a, a hurdle there? Like as far as imposter syndrome, as far as wondering, hey, wh- you know, does my hair look wonky? Does my voice sound weird? Tell me about like, yeah. it, was that, was it an easy progression or was it, was there a hurdle? I think my hurdles were less about hair and voice. I think, we, um, this is super sexist, but women have a harder time with that stuff and I think they get judged more. Um, There's a bunch of like fat, ugly guys who seem to do okay. Um, I know it's dumb, but it's, I think it's probably true. Um, Mine was like, my procrastination was about the gear and then not having like needed the format. Uh, I'm really, so let's talk about gear first and then format. Um, There's a dumb part of all of our brain, which is if I had the right stuff, then I'd be able to shoot the right videos. And I'm just like one camera away from being really good at this stuff. And it's not true, but I believed it. And so I was watching this YouTuber called Casey Neistat, who I love, and he's shooting on a Canon 70D. And he's talking about how great it is. So I bought the Canon 70D. I think I bought the 80D because it was, you know, it had just replaced it or whatever. And then, um, so I'm doing, and I've got the camera and I'm feeling good about it. And then, and then he does this video that like a couple of weeks later saying, oh, I've, I've moved to Sony. Like, <laughs> I can't be a good camera. So, so then, what do they do? I bought the freaking Sony, didn't I? And then um, literally three days later, he's like, oh, I've moved from that Sony to this other Sony. And so I'm, I'm three cameras in in three weeks. It's stupid. And my videos didn't get any better. I was just like obsessed about the gear. And then a guy called Michael Gabin once told me, uh, it's the wizard, not the wand. 
I was like, okay, so it's it's clearly not the gear. And I, like, I love gear as much as the next guy. I don't have as much cool camera gear as you do. I've got like a couple of cameras. Um, yeah, one that sits up here and a couple back home in Sydney. Uh, but it's totally not the camera. Um, so I let go of that. I shoot, you know, at least half of my videos on my, on my phone. I mean, this is like an iPhone mini. It's not like the fancy super duper big one. I just love this little, cam little phone. Uh, and it's great and fine. And sometimes the, if you think about a spectrum between like professional video and personal video, sometimes the personal stuff just works better. Uh, people seem to relate to it better. And it's just easy because it's in your pocket and you just bang it out and away we go. Uh, the other thing that I think I got that would have been a stumbling block, but I knew myself was I'm really good at freestyling when I've got a framework to follow. And so just working out a framework for here's, here's like the structure of my videos. Like what would what go in a great video? There would, there'd be a hook. There'd be a little bit of like why you need it. There'd be, you know, uh, one or three big ideas and then some kind of, you know, call to action piece, you know, loosely, and, like a, and a wrap up. So like I built this little thing, I called it the video flow, which is like an outliner for an episode. And then if I had to shoot a video, I would either um, just sketch out, you know, a few keywords for each of those sections, or I just look at the camera, say the first bit, keep staring at the camera, or, you know, like think about my next bit, then look at the camera and do the next bit, and like just jump, just jump cut, nothing fancy, but just jump cuts. And then later on with Spark camera, this app I love on my iPhone, I can just do the same thing. Just like hold it, same a bit, think about the next bit, same a bit. Um, so framework was really helpful for me. I didn't really have imposter syndrome because, because the video is not really about me. It's about who's watching it and me trying to help them. And mm. I think uh, a guy called Matt Church once said, um, you fix nervous with service. And that, I found that really helpful. It's like, you know, I'm not relevant. I, I don't even matter. Um, there's somebody there who needs the needs the stuff and I'm just going to talk to them. Yeah. You know, you know, I just noticed while you're explaining this and, uh, you know, well, number one, good for you for not having imposter syndrome, getting in front of the camera. But yeah. the other thing that I wanted to, to highlight is that I've seen a lot of people say a lot of profound things. And if I was new, then I'd think that this person's an absolute genius. But because I've been around the block a few times, I'm like, oh, he's quoting so-and-so and so-and-so. Yeah, yeah, yeah you keep referencing the person's name, even a couple of people I didn't know. And I'm like, okay, and this is this is that level of integrity that, and I'd encourage anybody who's listening, if you're making content and you hear something really clever and you use yeah. it, credit it, because that's just gonna, like what, what happens, I feel when people don't do it, they feel insecure, right? They just, they just feel yeah, like, and you, and I like, want people to think it's me. You know it from somewhere else, you're like, oh, this person just took credit for something that's not their yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah, you just lose credibility. So yeah, you just omission. Like, what do they call it? Uh, sins of omission sins through omission or something. Like it's correct. It, yeah, it it's a slippery slope, you know. And then I think yeah. that like guy Jay Shetty, he got called out for it big time a couple years ago because yeah. he actually started putting his name on the quotes that were not his, or yeah. or somebody on his team did. That that was a mess. Yeah. So I just wanted to say th thanks for uh, for doing yeah, that. No and uh, I I try my best to remember. Sometimes I, I probably it's like um. Slow. So the, that's called attribution. Yeah. And I think it's a classy thing to do. Um, I, the best example of it I saw was from a, a basketball coach called John Wooden, who was the coach mm -hmm. of the UCLA Bruins. I think more championships, maybe still, but certainly at the time than anyone by, like, by years and years and years of champ, like something like seven or eight in a row. I'm not a, I don't know the stats, but loosely. And uh, he kept stats on everything. And he invented, he's the guy who invented, you know, in basketball, they have the assist. Like if I throw you the ball mm -hmm. and you score, you get the points, but I get the assist. So he invented the assist. And uh, so he said, guys, from now on, if somebody gives you the ball and you score, on the way back down the court when you're hustling into, into defense, um, just like acknowledge them or point or, or whatever um, to acknowledge the assist. And one of his guys said, but coach, coach, what if they're not looking? He, he just said, I guarantee they'll be looking. And uh, <laughs> that's good, it's good advice, just acknowledge the assist. Because you know, we all got, yeah, I'm sure you've added your own, you know, your yes ands and your yes buts to it. Um, but a lot of the ideas we have come from somewhere, even if they're just loosely inspired by, so just give credit. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it does the opposite of what most people think. If people think yes. if they attribute, then people are going to think, oh, you're just a copycat. But once they figure out you didn't attribute it, it's, it's so much worse. There's so much more respect. Yeah, and I think they go, feel secure enough to do that. Yeah. Either I've got to like learn from all these people, or I can chat with you who's learned from all these people and you're my shortcut. And that's an advantage too. Yeah. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, back back to 
you know, your journey here. We've, yeah. we've, uh, you know, we've established your, you know, well into the seven figure range and, yeah. up, I probably close to eight or over eight, somewhere around there. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. In the eight figure range. So I'd like, I think that my viewers, my listeners are going to be really interested to know what is working right now. And, yeah. uh, like what's what's your content plan? How do you, how do you do it? And what's how are you, I guess, fueling this uh, you know eight figure business that you've got? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the thing we're about to talk about has been massive for us. We figured it out halfway through last year. We're on like version seven or so. Uh, it's been amazing for clients. So uh, we call it the weekly client machine. Um, the big idea is that we get leads every day and we get clients every week and the content structure is a big part of that. I'll give you sure. an overview of, kind of why we do it and then I'll give you the, the system. Absolutely. Um, so here's the, here's the big idea. I reckon one of the challenges we've got as coaches is that we've got to create a bunch of content. And uh, so we've got client content, you know, stuff that you give to your clients. We've got sales content and we've got marketing content, right? If you think about that, like that's a lot of stuff. Most of us are already working hard to create great stuff, you know, systems and, and plans for our clients. And then sales content, maybe there's not so much there, like you, you know, new funnels every now and again, but there's a, there's a lot of client content and there's a lot of marketing content. And so we were on this kind of hamster wheel, building great stuff for our clients and then going, well, what am I gonna to say to my prospects to attract them? And then like, it's, it's so freaking obvious, man, it's embarrassing. If the stuff we build for our clients is perfect for our ideal clients who we've got, then it's probably also perfect for attracting people just like them, right? It's obvious. And so we just had this idea that what if the content that we make for our clients, what if the content was the marketing? In other words, we create this and then we just take slices of it and we share it out here. So that's the big idea. It's like we're already doing the hard work. We're making great stuff for our clients. There's no need to reinvent. And so our whole content plan is basically, let's take pieces of what worked for our clients and share them in a particular way with prospects. That's the big idea. Very yeah, simple. Yeah. And just um, for the people who are listening, uh, if you can't see what he's done, he's basically it's like three concentric circles, like a bullseye. And right in the middle is client. In the middle ring, we've got sales. And on the outer ring is marketing. And uh, so that should help you just visualize what, what he's mm. done for us here. So then the question is, okay, well, if I'm sharing this stuff for my clients and they're paying for it, how much do I share to the public so that it's good enough, but I'm not ripping off the guys who are paying the money? I think is one way to think about it. And so the, the people, people are terrified of like giving too much away in their free stuff. And it's just dumb. It's just dumb. The big idea is when you give uh, freely of your information, you earn the right to charge a premium for implementation. I got that from Justin Roth Marsh, a dude in Brisbane. Uh, so we're gonna share parts of the information, knowing that like there are, there are totally gonna be some people who take your free stuff and run with it. I've got a guy who, who just joined Black Belt a couple of months ago who got to 70 grand a month just off our free content. That's freaking awesome, it's fantastic. Um, but then there's, most people aren't looking for how do I do stuff? They're looking for who can help me do this stuff and they, they use your content just as a way to go, oh, does this person know what they're talking about? And that's kind of, that's how I think about it. So yeah, it's like, it's like Costco, right? If you have that in Australia, they, they give you all the free food. I've never been, I've heard of it. I, I understand oh. there's, there's like a membership card and like enormous yeah, amounts it, of it, You buy stuff from a big warehouse, but you know, they sell everything in boxes, right? Like bulk yeah. size and nobody wants to buy the whole box until they taste a cookie, right? And they have these ladies handing out cookies, you know, and that's- Is that right? Yeah, and it's, they just really? they just take something right off. The, like you see them when they run out, they just reach behind them, open up another box and then yeah, hand them out. Give you a piece and so you, buy you the can whole see box. really, this is exactly what you're gonna get. And you're just yeah, getting a, exactly. a section of it, not the whole box. So let's say we, we're gonna build a training for our clients. Okay, so a great training, um, if you just draw a little quadrant, a great training has four core components. This is from a lady called Bernice McCarthy who taught primary school teachers how to create great lesson plans back in the, like, the 60s. It's called Format, it's very easy. We wanna teach people why it matters, what they need to know, how to do it, and what to do now. Why, what, how, now. And why is about getting them emotionally kind of excited about it. What is like, so I think about the why is like you, you get their heart excited. What is you tell their head the, you know, the top three or four or five big ideas. How to, you show their hands what to do, and then now you tell their feet to march. So it's like, it's heart, head, hands, feet. Anyway, so that's a good client training. Um, for our marketing, we just get a pair of scissors and we cut it straight up the middle. And in our marketing, we share why and what, um, but not how and now. So it's up here on the screen right now. So if we had some scissors, you know, if this is a complete training, it, our marketing shares this half, and the people who pay get the, the, all the how to and the here's what to do now. 
Does that kind okay. of make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. Okay, so if you take that idea, then all we're gonna do is we're gonna take trainings we've already given to our clients and we're gonna share pieces of them, the why piece, the what piece, and usually we'll dangle the, the worksheet. You know, most of my stuff has like a PDF worksheet that goes along with it or a set yeah, of workbooks. Yeah, just like right now you're drawing these models and if Correct. anybody's watching this, they'll probably be like, hey, I'd love to get a copy of that, right? You just created 100%. that desire by showing it. Oh yeah, I didn't, I, mean, I didn't even do it on purpose, but like it's just easy to teach with a worksheet often. And then what we do is in our, in our marketing, we teach why and what, and then we go, hey, if you want the worksheet so you can implement this too, um, leave a comment or click here and opt in for it. And so the why, what is freely available and the worksheet is kind of the first step, I guess, to the how-to and that's, uh, that costs people an opt-in and that's kind of the big idea. So um, what we figured out was um, content is really simple when you've got a plan. It doesn't really matter what the plan is. We've got one that works great for us, which I'll, I'll walk you through. But the big idea is there's a plan. Every week has the same rhythm, but the topics are different, if that makes sense. Um, so let's just walk through the, the sheet. Um, if this is a... Let's say this is a month. And so we have like week one, two, three, four in a month. Yep. Um, and so you just pick a topic. So let's say you might do um, editing. You might do um, YouTube ads. I'm making stuff up for you, Ken. I'm sure you've got better topics than me. Just whatever your topics are, you know, topic one, two, three, four, and that's gonna be your theme for the week. Then each week follows a really simple formula. And you can see along the top of the page here, um, I'll just, read them out for people who yep. are audio only right now. Okay. Just imagine there's a, a, um, a, uh, a grid and down the left-hand side, it's just got week one, two, three, four. And along the top, it's got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the days of the week. And each day has a, has a, a theme, um, like a, an angle to look at your content through. So on Monday, we have a belief shifting post and it's just a piece of text designed to help people go, hey, the reason you haven't been successful with this is because you're thinking about it like that, but you should be thinking about it like that. And all we want to do at the start of the week is get people interested and excited about uh, your topic or your opportunity and realize that they've been thinking about it differently than how super successful people think about it. Yeah? Yeah. So that's, that's a text post for us. Mm -hmm. uh, on Tuesday, Tuesday we raise hands. So if Monday is shift beliefs, Tuesday is raise hands. And we say, hey, I've got this, this cool thing, this lead magnet, this set of worksheets. Would you like, would you like them? So if Monday is kind of like um, shift beliefs, Tuesday is... Just raise the hands. I've got this lead magnet. Would you like one? So this is not video. This is text. Mostly. I mean, you could do an Instagram story about it for sure. But usually it's just like, hey, I've got this thing. Do you want it? Wednesday, we show some proof. Here's a client. This is where we're putting the, you know, the client here in the, in the spotlight. And you're just in the, in the background. And you just tell a client story uh, you, around this topic. So let's say the, the topic is sales. We had a client who was struggling with sales. And we taught them this formula. And so you talk about, here was their problem. Uh, here's what they implemented and here are the results. Would you like some help? Um, Thursday, we do a live video. And the live video is, um, you know, 10, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes. The length is less important than you get your stuff across. And the, the secret sauce for us is we literally just take the slide deck that we taught our clients and we teach the first half. Here's the topic. Here's why it matters. Here's the five big ideas. If you want the worksheet, grab them. Perfect. Simple. Yeah, yeah, that's. I think I think people don't realize how simple this is. Oh, it's so simple. And I mean, following a framework makes it so much makes easier. it so easy. You're, you're filling in the blanks, blanks is what you're doing. You're filling yeah. in blanks exactly right. Yeah. So I think you can you can, you know, the three options are we can guesswork. Guesswork's you know slow and annoying. Hard work. Yeah, eventually you'll figure it out. Or just follow a framework. Framework's fast and easy. So just find a framework. I don't care if you use mine or invent your own or find somebody else's. But just like. As soon as you've got a framework, you can pull your content and your personality in and it'll just yeah. pop. I've got two more to go real quick. Friday, straight call to action. Would you like to work with me to insert topic here? And on Sunday, usually is, hey, I did this great live video. Would you like to watch the recording? And so that's the framework. Uh, in our world, it gets used across email, Facebook group, um, Instagram. I haven't TikToked yet, I apologize. Uh, and YouTube, and it's the same content. The thing I love about this dude is it takes us about 35 minutes, maybe if it's your first time, maybe it's an hour to plan the, you know, plan a month's worth of content. And the only thing that I do, and I know that one of your special sources do, is like a team to do this stuff for people. The only thing I do is I do the live video on Thursday and everything else is done by not me, which is the, my favorite person. 
Um, <laughs> not me. As if, yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. In fact, we, we registered nottaki.com as a domain. I remember that. I thought that was pretty yeah. clever. Yeah, nottaki.com. Obviously, it'd be better if it was like notken.com and not whoever, not you.com. It's probably a better name. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is the idea. It takes uh, about 35 minutes each month to plan out the next month. And then on Thursday morning, I open up my base camp, you know, the software that we use to plan projects. And there's a task for me to shoot a video about this. It's got the three bullet points and the PDF and the original slide deck, and I just can riff from it and I hang up and it's done and I'm finished. Love it, love it. So yeah. you said that you're sending this stuff out on uh, email, putting it on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, right? Are you seeing Correct. any, um, uh, in Facebook, is it just your group or is it also your profile and your page and all that? Um, some of the, everything goes in the group and then pieces of it go on the profile, the page, is useful for basically we run ads to the lead magnet each week, um, but it's mostly profile and and group. First of all, uh, what you just what you just shared there, and I know because I'm on the inside of, of your of the community and stuff. This is stuff people are paying mm. for uh, a lot of money for yeah. every single month, and they make a long commitment with you. Uh, so thank you for sharing yes. that with the audience. That's and for everybody that's listening, I, I just just to give some uh, perspective. Uh, People are paying multiple thousands of dollars. I don't know what the exact number is for new members, but when I came in, it was about three thousand dollars a month just to have the privilege of learning this stuff. So, Ataki, thanks so much for sharing that. And if you want to yeah, grab yeah. that, run with it, then I, I recommend you do, especially if you are a coach. Um, now, yeah, I have I'll a question. put the weekly climate machine stuff. I'll give you the link, and you can just put it in here. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Now. Is this something that works only for coaches or have you had people from other industries come in and, and try this and say, hey, this is fantastic? Yeah, uh, the short answer is I don't know. My world is very you know, narrowly kind of coach specific. So, I mean, if you run a, a supermarket, it's probably not that useful. Um, but if you're in the kind of advice business, whether it's uh, you know a, a coach or a consultant or a teacher or a speaker or a trainer, anyone who's got like some information to share, this will work great. Uh, outside of that, I don't know. It might be perfect, but like I couldn't, I yeah. couldn't really tell you. Sure, no problem. And I'm, I think that a lot of people were, you know, they what they see is the, you know, the the polished message that comes out on Instagram and everything. And I think a lot of people are curious about. <laughs> yeah. What, was there a time where there was uh, where something went terribly wrong <laughs> with with some yeah, content you published? Every week. Okay. Yeah, of well, course. If if you're willing, is there something a story you could share with us so that people are not going to feel like I can never achieve this level of perfection? They're going to feel like oh, dude, oh yeah, I, I made can that I give mistake you one too. From like three days ago. Oh yeah, let's hear that. This is all it. right. So three days ago, I'm standing right here teaching some stuff on Zoom to a bunch of clients, new clients. You want to make a good impression on new clients. Um, one important piece of the backstory is that three months ago we got two puppies who are out there barking right now, and I was in here teaching my stuff, and I was standing here. Uh, that's important because you can see the edge of the carpet right here. So two puppies, one after, the, one after the other, about five minutes apart, walked behind me, popped right there, squatted and dropped a turd right there on the carpet right behind me <laughs> and then walked off. And then five minutes later, the second dog. So I just, I just stood here for the rest of my... <laughs> like, there was a moment I was, I was just in flow, drawing some stuff and I looked up and was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> just pretended so, it wasn't there, right? Well, I didn't pretend. I just said, I don't know if you saw... But my dog's just dropped two deuces right behind us. That's a little welcome gift for both uh, of us. And I'm just going to cover it up so you don't have to look at it. But I just like, I think if it happens, you just have to own it. Um, yeah, you yeah. can't pretend it didn't happen. It's very funny. Yeah. You know what? It's hilarious. Uh, I, I, from, I remember uh, probably two years ago or a year and a half ago, there was this BBC reporter reporting from home, right? Oh, and I then saw that. And his kid opened the his door. His kid opens the door and his wife comes rushing in and gets them out. And yep. the, the most awkward thing about it was he was trying to pretend it didn't happen and if he would have just been totally normal say oh sorry i'm working from home or like hey kids you know daddy's gonna work fine. but he tried to pretend nothing was happening and that's what made it so ridiculous and, and it went so yeah, viral you just have to own it. it's funny when i first started shooting uh, a weekly video um i wasn't comfortable on camera yet and so there was a lot of times where i like screwed up my words and we just left the camera rolling and then my son who was my editor at the time jotham who you know would would you know cut out the bad bits and I thought you know what the bad bits are pretty entertaining let's just put the outtakes at the end and people loved the videos because they could see this guy who just taught something really amazing get totally tongue tied or screw up his words or just like Rah! stress himself out and uh, to my utter dismay they enjoyed the outtakes better than the content sometimes at the start um, but I think it's just people. 
people don't buy coaching, they buy coaches. And a part of the, the, the only thing I don't love about the content plan I just showed you is that it's all business. And if you're not careful about it, you lose a little bit of the personal connection. Mm -hmm. And so the day that I, I skipped when we went through our days, I didn't talk about Saturday. And I think Saturday for us is an opportunity to add personal story, uh, a little bit more character. Like if you think about yourself like a superhero character, you know, yes, Superman is your faster than a speeding bullet and more powerful than a locomotive and able to stop bullets or whatever it is. But he's also allergic to kryptonite. And so um, I went through a phase where I was really deliberately sharing the character as well as the content. You know, who's your, what's your kryptonite? What's a battle you're dealing with right now? Who's on your team? Like who's the Alfred? You know, if you think Batman, Josie Lair, that sort of stuff. And I think people just really connect with the who you are as much or more than what you say. As much, probably not more, but as much, maybe, maybe more. And uh, I think we can get too professional and keeping the balance in it and the, the realness in is, I think, kind of important. 100%, 100%. And when you do these kind of videos where you, you want to show the personality side more, is that typically just shot on your phone? You, I mean, it was for me because we were traveling and like, frankly, it's easy just when you're out and about and you see something funny, just to grab your phone and shoot it and talk about it. Um, I, th I, I think the gear really doesn't, really doesn't matter. I mean, it says the guy who's got like the fancy Ken Okazaki style studio. Um, I mean, the gear matters to a point, but like, if the goal is personality, that's what matters, not what camera it's shot on. Um, like we Absolutely. traveled, we traveled for three and a half years around the world, me and, the, and my wife and the kids, 40 countries in 40 months. It was amazing. And we went through very, you know, like lots of different iterations of like, I had a guy, you know, with a camera shooting stuff, following us around. That was fun for a bit. And then it's like, dude, I don't really want you like following me around all the time. And then it was fancy camera on a, like a Casey Neistat style kind of gorilla pod. And that was cool, but heavy. Um, I usually just use Spark Camera on my phone or just Facebook Live because it's like, I like Facebook Live because it's one take and whatever happens, happens and there's no editing and it's just done. And uh, I think that's my favorite, like no safety net, just get it out. Yeah. It's very rare yeah. that we do two takes for something. And if there's shit bits, we just, someone can chop them out or, or we just leave, mostly we just leave them in because they're entertaining. Yeah, phones are getting ridiculously good these days and it's, I think that for social media, because people are watching it on a phone, yeah, then to shoot on a phone is is totally fine. And uh, I, I think that there's two two areas though. You've got the there's one there's one there's one caveat, and the caveat is we're traveling. I was messaging with you yesterday, we're traveling in a in a month's time for a, a good month back in Europe on a boat. Nice. And uh, I'd love to get my hands on one of those Go Box Studios. You know, <laughs> All right, we'll have that fun. conversation so, as soon as yeah. you're ready. The yeah, that that is you know it was actually made for for people like you you know very, very yeah. specifically, but uh, you know I think that a lot of people have this idea about what looks like professional kind of cinematic and what's shot on your phone, and mm. there is a different look, and I think that there's you don't need to have that cinematic look all the time. Having yes. it sometimes helps you to set up status though. People see it and it just feels different. Like somebody Agreed. paid attention to detail and Correct. they actually w cared about how it looked. And on the other hand, you got connection. Something that looks like a shot on a phone. Everybody's got a phone. They feel like, hey, I, you know, yeah. I could do that. This guy's just like me. Yep. Yeah. And then, but then you, you want both if you want to get high ticket clients and if you want to feel connected. Uh, if you stay in just one dimension all the time, then you know, you're going to get grouped with, you know, a TikToker, or a YouTube or something like that. Yeah. Whereas really right. you, you want people to see you as you are in, in multiple different, you know, scenarios and situations. Yeah. Like uh, uh, we were chatting before we started about um, our friend, Alex Hormozzi. He's prolific uh, at video creation and content. And the, I mean, there's, I mean, I'm sure there's a nice camera shooting most of it, but it's just like, it's a dude sitting in a, in a closet talking stuff. Yep. And he's not, he hasn't like 10 X his followers by having pro video. He's had it by having something good to say and an opinion and some runs on the board. Um, and so 
there's definitely a place like uh, we had you fly out to Sydney and we shot those Ten Commandments and Seven Sins videos, and they're they're still the best video we've ever shot ever. Thank you, Ken. I'm, um, I'm super proud of those. Those are fun. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. Um, some poor fashion choices at my end, but apart from that, um, really good, really really good video. Um, so there's a, I think there's, you're right, there's a place for both. And I think the, the question really isn't, um, yeah, how do I get started? It's when do I get started? And, and that should be like now with whatever you've yeah. got in your hands. And I wish I knew who I could attribute this quote to because we talked about that earlier, but there is a quote going Which around, one? the best camera is the one you have with you, right? Yeah, I don't know who said that either, but it's true. It is it is true. It's, you have a spark of an idea or you're in a situation with somebody or, or whatever, just use what you have. And, every, and, you and want if you don't you have it, like, borrow the phone of the person next to you. <laughs> borrow the, exactly right. Like the nice thing about this is in two seconds, you're ready to go. Yep. Whereas when we had the fancy camera, it was like, oh, let's just get it set up. Oh, let's balance the gimbal. Let's get the microphone. It's like, ah, oh, the moment's lost, you know. Yeah. Yep. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Look, I have a, uh, I'm curious to know, and I know yep. that you have team helping you, the, the not talkies, yes. right? Uh, yeah. With your video setup. Uh, at some point, uh, even before you had Jotham helping you, you're probably editing the videos yourself and you know doing everything from A to Z, which I think everybody goes through that stage. Yeah, when do you feel, at what stage do you feel, or what 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 situation is it appropriate mm -hmm. for someone to just stop editing video and either hire an agency or hire somebody on their team to do it? Yeah. So I think if you go, like we all start somewhere and yes, I was editing videos in ScreenFlow because it was the, the tool that I knew. And it's not a great video editing, it was, you know, it's a screen recording app, but I knew how to edit on that. So I started on that. Um, I got out of it as quick as I could. Um, uh, and it wasn't a revenue level, it was, a, it was an energy and a value of time level. So I think if you go, I'm just gonna, I've got this old camera. Um, there's two jobs. There's in front of the camera, and then there's behind, you know, behind the camera. And the um, the person behind the camera is super super important. But your value as a content creator is to be the person in front of the camera. And uh, as quickly as you can, I think you want to get yourself to the front of the camera position and away from the back of the camera position, whether that's shooting or it's editing or it's, it's both. Um, for me, it was when. I realized I wasn't very good at it and I wasn't enjoying it. And in the hour it would take me to edit a three minute video, I could have shot, you know, six more videos and made a bigger contribution. So it's like energy wise, I wasn't loving it. And skill level, like I could either get great at editing video, but like, dude, an hour of, an hour of me in my, in my sweet spot is worth a hundred hours of a video editor or more. And that's the same for almost everyone watching this. Like the, an hour of, of you in your sweet spot doing the thing that like in front of camera work is worth hundreds of hours of editing time. And I don't just mean financially, but I mean like you could literally make enough money to hire that person for a hundred hours or more by doing one more yeah. video. Yeah, well, sometimes the way I, I look at things is if we exaggerate the situation, then what would that look like? And I imagine like, hey, imagine if Tom Cruise was editing his own Hollywood movies, right? Or, right. or anybody it's for that matter. Decision. Like they're so right. valuable being in front of the camera that they wouldn't even think of getting behind an editing bay and, and cutting that up. Now, on a no, smaller agreed. scale, uh, most of us who are on social media, we should we need to think like that. How can we get the right people in place who can do it better, faster, and, and, and cheaper than ourselves, right? Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, agreed. And so I think um, get an editor, as, like if you go, there's there's a shooter, there's an editor and there's a talent, right? The editor is probably the easiest one to find because they can be asynchronous, they can be anywhere else in the world. They don't have to be there in, with you in a room. A shooter, you know, is gonna be in the same space whether you book a room and an editor for a half a day or a day or you have someone following you around, like that's a high level of commitment. Um, but if you just like set up a tripod or hold your phone and shoot the stuff, drop it into Google Drive and have someone do their magic, I think that's that's an easy decision. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, by the way, I just Googled uh, the attribution for the best camera. Oh yeah, there's a that? book title yeah. uh, called "The Best ah. Camera Is the One You Have With You" by someone named Chase Jarvis. He actually has a YouTube channel. He does great video. Oh, dude, content. Chase is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if he's the first one, but he did write the book by that title. So well, well, let's give let's give Chase pretty, credit. But pretty yeah, good. Yeah, he's good he's the guy who created um, Creative Live. Yeah, he, he's done a lot of yeah, we stuff. Yeah, Wicked's fun. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. Cool. 
So next time someone asks, now we know. Yeah, I'll, I'll quit, uh, Chase. <laughs> all right, look, Taki, I just want to wrap this up because uh, mm. I want to respect your time. You're right. Um, you know what I do, right? Which is, you know, we help coaches, we help businesses to, you know, get their videos out there and really just help yeah. them to only have to be in front of the camera and we do all the rest. Um, yeah. What kind of person or what kind of uh, person do you think would benefit the most from this type of service? Uh, well, it's anyone who understands the value that they can bring in, bring in a couple of minutes of in front of camera, really. So that could be you're more established and you you know the, you at the cap of how many hours you can work in a day or a week or want to, and you know that hey, if I've got an hour in front of the camera a week or whatever it is, and, and somebody else can take care of the stuff and turn it into beautiful and amazing, I think that makes lots of sense. Um, if you're getting started. Um, like you can either learn it or you can find someone like find a who and the, the who's going to be the better solution almost every time. The only, yeah, if you're just getting started, maybe budget's a factor. Um, but if you want to use a service like yours, Ken, um, I just think it's anyone who wants to grow, who knows the video is the way to go. Um, and has got something to say, uh, and just doesn't want to do all that. But you know, like editing is hard, like. For me, editing is hard, it's not very fun. And not only do you edit, but you have to edit to be able to export to all of these different, you know, to, you know, to landscape, to portrait, to, you know, to, um, to stories, to da 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 And like, you can either learn all that stuff or you just find somebody who's great at it. I just think you'd be nuts to learn it unless you're, unless you're a masochist. <laughs> <laughs> or unless that's your thing, right? If, if, oh, I mean, if it's your thing, yeah, yeah, dude, if you geek out on it. I think most coaches, it's not their thing. And it's just, uh, it's it's like, you know, scrubbing toilets, you know? If, if you don't have I mean, it's to, better than you, scrubbing you toilets. Have to. <laughs> yeah, correct. It's better than scrubbing toilets by a long way. Um, yeah. Big love to all of our video editors out there. But um, yeah, I'd like... If I had to choose between houring five minutes of video or shooting 10 hours of video, I'd choose the 10, even I'd still shoot the 10 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I haven't even edited video myself in a, in a long time uh, yeah. simply because it's very time consuming. And we, yeah, we, we Especially average, with standards like yours. Yeah, it's, we, we have to, even with the professionals that we have, it's about 5X we calculate. So if someone yeah. sends us a, you know, a 30 minute video, then that's, we times that by five for like, the most basic cut, you know, without special yeah. titles or animation. And that's the starting point. It goes up from there. So, yeah. Know, and then you want to get good at captions because I think it was a video of yours, which said uh, it was like 70% of videos are watched on the toilet, which is embarrassing, but it's true. I, I'm one of those toilet watches. <laughs> um, um, you know, so captions are important because people have the sound off, uh, like all of that stuff. Like you can, you can learn it, you can, you can bring it in house. Or you can find someone who's great and just go, here's my videos. They've uploaded to the thing and I'll get them back in a, in a little bit, please. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for that. Now, if anybody's listening to this and they're a coach and mm. they want to find out more about what you do and if you might be able to help them scale up their businesses, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you or, or to find out more? Um, two things but i think the easiest honestly the easiest one is go to our facebook group if you just go to uh takisgroup.com okay that's t-a-k-i-s-g-r-o-u-p.com that's it yeah yeah thank you okay takisgroup.com oh, uh, that'll you know be your name is is you know, some people don't know how to spell it you know <laughs> correct that's important um that'll take you in there why you should go there if you're a coach is because uh every week for the last you know years i've been sharing one of these weekly videos with tips uh the videos that, that Ken shot for us, the seven deadly sins and the te 10 commandments of a black belt coach are in there as well in the guides. Um, it's just a great place to get a ton of free lessons and, and content about how to grow our way of growing a coaching business. And you'll A, get helped and B, decide if we're, you know, we're the right vibe for you or not. Perfect. Well, guys, make sure you check that out and it'll be in the links mm -hmm. below in the show notes. So yep. uh, it really is valuable. And I've been in that my, I've been in there myself for a number yeah, of years and a long time. it's I, I do catch up on all the stuff that he puts out there it's very good quality stuff yeah. Taki any last words of uh, advice you have for anybody who's who needs to up their game and their content creation uh, yeah it's reps dude it's just reps. get started Absolutely. yeah your first videos are going to be shit and that's great 
bury it with a um, hundred more that get incrementally bury better, it with a right? hundred more that's exactly right yeah 100 percent. we were chatting with a couple of our clients on friday about um who are doing really well with youtube and um yeah there's a lot of like ninja tactics and but really it comes down to reps um dan martel who i think might have already been on this show not yet but he's he's not yet, it's in. coming up yeah uh is a great friend and a, a really good client and uh maybe a hundred thousand YouTube subs, something like that now. I mean, I, I he's really close. He's, he was, he's just about to hit that. that yeah, he's here. about to hit it, right? Yeah. But like three years ago, he was at 20,000 subs. It's just growing, dude. Um, and he just has never missed a Monday. Every Monday, upload rain, hail or shine. Um, you know, so that's the organic route. Like if you're going to market with video, the only thing that you need is video. And the only way to get video is to shoot video. There so you go. Start. Absolutely. But guys, you heard it from Taki himself. Uh, it's it's about the reps. If you feel like the videos you're making are not at the quality or or the you know the impact you want, do more. Get and d- yeah. look back at what worked, what didn't, and uh, just keep... Like, have you seen Gary Vee's first video or Marie Folio's first video? They oh, were absolutely. awful. <laughs> yeah, but they started and they were proud of them at the time. They were like the best they could do at the time. And like looking back 10 years later, they're, they're like, oh. But they're proud of them, and I think they that's are. just great. I'm super proud Gary of his videos. Gary brags about how bad his videos were, and and that's yeah. you know, that's his that's his version of humility. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, that's great. All right, guys, thank you so much. We're going to wrap this up, Taki. I absolutely yeah, appreciate you taking show. your time for this conversation, sharing your wisdom and some of your stories with the listeners. Uh, guys, be sure to check out the show notes. There'll be links in there for some of the resources we talked about, plus how mm-hmm. to get into Taki's group uh make sure you check it out and i will see you in there because i am also a member myself thank you taki so much yeah